Call the meeting to order and start with the pledge. <coughs> I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sorry. Sorry. All right. We need to approve the agenda. We need a motion. I move to approve the agenda as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We need to approve the consent agenda. We need a motion. I move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. We are going to now move on to audience delegations. I do believe we have one person signed up. Yes, ma'am, we do. All right. And if you will recall, there is a three-minute time limit on, on your uh, presentation. I thought a visual might be, might be a little bit better than just me trying to explain it. And this is in regard to two of the proposals in, in the salary schedules that you guys are going to be taking action on tonight. I have a copy of the clerical um, business office and the technology one, and then I have a copy of the aid, para, and the focus facilitator one. It's been since 2013 since this, um, these two proposals have gotten anything added to the base and at that time, well, added to step one, at that time it was five cents. So what I was thinking would be good is to eliminate step one and step two, make step three, step one, move everything up so you can kind of see what the um, raise on the steps would be. I can kind of estimate the number of employees. I didn't know the experience of them, but I kind of figured it out. It would probably it'd be about 54 to 70 cents an hour increase for these employees. Um, the number we have, it probably wouldn't be that large of an amount. I'm going to say maybe a few thousand dollars. I love what the teachers are you proposing for the teachers our teachers wouldn't be able to do much the buildings and themselves the clerical staff the Paris staff the aides they're what is the backbone of this district so I would just kind of like for you guys to consider upping their salary schedule thank you Marcy thank you all right, we're going to move on to student recognition. I believe the early childhood has some kids that they would like to recognize this evening. This month, I wanted to. Um, recognize some students. We have a lot of students that have really good attendance this year. I have one student I'm going to recognize tonight that has 100% attendance and she actually had 100% attendance when she came to preschool as well. Um, but my other friends that are here tonight have had at least 99% attendance which we spread germs like wildfire <laughs> in kindergarten. Yeah. So kudos to them and their parents for keeping them healthy. So I just want to recognize them. I have a certificate. And then each of them are going to get four vouchers for Royals tickets. Oh. Yeah. Oh. And the Royals organization um, has something where schools can send out and they give you so many vouchers for the school. So that's, that's where I got those. So, okay, our first... Excellent attendance recipient is Carter Carter Bonnert. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and then let's see, Jamie Cheshire is not here tonight. Colton Houston. Stand by Carter. And Carly Clausen is not here this evening. But we have Molly ben McGoffin. Molly McGoffin. Great job. She looks so pretty tonight. Mm -hmm. pretty. Cody Menino is not here. <laughs> We've got Jackson Ritter. And let's see, Quinn Schof is gone tonight. And so is James Williams, but we have Leo Teeter. <laughs> and we have Bentley Zwartz. And then 100% perfect attendance goes to Isabel <coughs> Obermiller. All right, let's give them a big round of applause. <laughs> and don't they just look like they're ready to go to first grade? They have grown up so much. No, it wasn't. So proud of them. You guys can go back and sit with your parents. And then after we do another recognition, I think, then everybody can go home and have dinner. <laughs> that was not presidential. It was not at all. <laughs> <laughs> but when I realized I had to get even lower, I was like, no! <laughs> All right, I believe we have another presentation from the high school, Mr. Weavers. Good evening. Um, so this is the last of our students of the month for the 18-19 uh, school year. Um, and the May students of the month at the high school were Brianna Chiadini and Mr. Max Allen, who's with us. Max, come on. Brianna couldn't be here this evening, but uh, I'm going to start off and talk a little bit about her. Uh, Brianna was involved in band, show choir, swing team, drama, NHS, SAD, and peer helpers throughout her time at HHS. And I'm sure you know by now, Brianna's been appointed to the U.S. Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland. And she leaves for her appointment on June 27th. And we wish her the best. Uh, she told me that the best thing about high school was being with all of her friends. And when I talked to the teachers that she told me made an impact on her, uh, Miss Lyons said that uh, Brianna is an amazing student who can always make me laugh with her sassiness. Her work ethic is unmatched, as we would do her fitness testing for the Naval Academy together, and she would push herself immensely to achieve the best scores possible. We'll miss her next year. Mrs. Ellsworth said that Brianna was hard to let go this year. She is such a bright and shining star and always willing to go the extra mile for anyone in need. It's been my pleasure watching her grow and mature through her academics these past two years. I know she'll make us proud here at HHS. No matter where she goes or how far from home she finds herself, she's well grounded and knows who she is. I cannot wait to hear about all the amazing ways that she's going to impact our world. And then Mr. K said that uh, Brianna is so amazing that she violates the laws of physics. And then he put in parentheses, she'll get it. So it must be an inside joke. And then uh, finally, Mrs. Joseph said that Brianna is an outstanding young lady, both in and out of school. And the United States should be proud that she has chosen to protect all of us. And then our male student of the month was Max Allen, who's here with us. Uh, Max was involved in drama, uh, speech and debate, which he's president of. Uh, SAD, Art Club, FFA, and Winter Guard. And Max has enlisted in the National Guard and will be attending Missouri Southern in the future before turning to active duty. He told me his favorite part of high school has been just coming to school and being with his friends. 
and then teachers that have had an impact on him, Mrs. Keith. Um, she wrote a story. She oh. said, it's a long one. So that uh, Max has had a profound impact on both the theater department and the speech and debate team. He came to HHS without any theater experience at all and proceeded to win several large roles. He helped build Derby set, learned how to stage manage, and became a leader of both our social and service projects. Max was also president of the speech and debate team. He led by example in so many ways, attended the most competitions, trying his hand at nearly every event in the National Speech and Debate Association's program. He also participated in youth and government, practicing speaking in a congressional type setting. He is kind, a good mentor to the other students, and a real treasure. We've been honored to have him in our programs. And then Mrs. Ellsworth said Max will be greatly missed now that he's graduated. Over the last few years, Max has made the classroom and hallways a pleasant place to be. He always has a smile on his face and a warm hello. He will give back greatly to our community, and I'm proud to have had the privilege of being his teacher. And then Mr. McGoffin said that Max is one of the most genuine and self-disciplined students with whom I've had the pleasure of working. His unique combination of aptitude, work ethic, and compassion will not only serve to benefit his own life, but also the lives of many others. And then Mrs. Domeni said that one of the things that has always impressed me about Max is that he is such an innovative thinker. His creativity and fresh approach allowed him to tackle coursework in unexpected ways that delivered a pretty cool product. Max is always incredibly tenacious. He sticks with projects until they're completed, no matter the time required. Max out. I asked Max when he got here how he graduated life has been treating him, and he told me he's been working a lot. <laughs> and I told him, welcome to adulting. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. What I love is we have kindergartners. <laughs> this is the finished product, so I bet, bet some of these kids in this room are going to be up there one of these days. All right, you are more than welcome to stay if you would like, but it, I understand most of you would probably like to move on with your evening, so that is completely fine, too. So if you want to take a minute and head out, that is perfectly fine. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. See ya. That is not adorable. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. 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 Oh my gosh. <laughs> they see you in two years. Okay, I believe our partner organization, he is not here yet. He had to pick up his kids, so we may have to, we'll skip him for now and then swing back, swoop, swoop the loop and get him when he comes in. Swoop the loop. Swoop the loop. <laughs> so we'll, we will move on to the donation <coughs> acknowledgement. Okay, so per board policy KH, the administration hereby reports to the Board of Education the receipt of a donation to the CAS Career Center Construction Technology Program of three skill saws and a cordless nail gun from Wendell Gartman of Gartman Construction. Additionally, a variety of other tools were donated by Gina Bosley and McCray Lumber and Lowe's at State Line and 135th. So we thank them for their donations. Very, Very nice. nice. Okay, assessment and evaluation of district programs. For the month of April, district receipts include $8.4 <coughs> million in general fund property taxes and $2.2 million in debt service tax. This represents 99.2%, so we're getting very close. Uh, special revenue funds, um, the revenues are near budget on according to the monthly allocation from the state, except with the exception of the formula, we're still waiting to see. We've got one month to see if they can make up a little bit of this, but we are a little behind our budget on that. Um, on the expenditure side, the operating expenditures still mirror closely that the same period of last year. We are gonna see some potential savings though in salary line items and uh, professional services, which is a good thing. Total investments in cash are $12.6 million at the end of April. Any questions? 
Okay, the gifted program evaluation. That's me. <laughs> I'm Laura Fries, and you probably have seen the report that Mr. Erholtz and I put together. Just a lot of numbers, kids that have been served and tested and qualified, and um, some of the accomplishments of the students and I'd like to highlight a couple of them. Um, I should have invited her here tonight. One of my seventh graders who took the ACT this December, actually she just took it in April because she had spine surgery in December when most, most of the seventh graders take the um, ACT. They can do it as part of the Duke TIP acceleration program for talented seventh graders and she really wanted to do it but she was still recovering from surgery so she didn't get to take it until April and she scored um, high enough to get national recognition at Duke University this spring. So she scored a 26 on the ACT as a seventh grader. So higher than most high school kids take uh, they do it. So that's Danica Knight, if you want a name attached to that. Her name's Danica Knight. She's um, obviously got great things ahead of her. Um, also a little shout out to my eighth grade class who stayed after school with me for two hours today just to do a little kind of hats graduation party and they're um, they're a really neat group and I, I push them really hard in eighth grade to make them do really uncomfortable things like go to Model UN and I don't just let them sit in the meetings all day. I make them talk in front of the podium at some point during the day. I bribe them with ice cream and that works pretty well and they tattle on each other. They're like, well, how will you know if we speak? Because there's like four different committee rooms and I'm running around all the rooms and, and I'm like, someone will tell me if you don't and they, they do. They tattle on each other. Um, so they really rose to the occasion this year and did a nice job with that. Um, and this same class, as you can see, um, purchased that solar charger that's at Memorial Stadium now, and that's for public use by anybody at the stadium. Um, Mr. Eggers was instrumental in, and Mr. Freeman in getting that installed, and that was a $3,000 grant they won last spring, about a year ago. And they were supposed to spend it on some sort of energy efficiency initiative in their school or community. And after lots and lots of research, um, they really did, thought that would be a really cool thing for the community. So there's a little placard on it that says it was donated by the HATS class of 2023. So that's kind of a special group of kiddos. Um, and just something to look forward to. Um, younger kids, second, third, fourth graders, wanting to make sure that we identify all those kiddos that should be in hats, and sometimes it's hard to tell yet when they're just babies, you know, um, and so a lot of them get referred and then don't end up qualifying, and so now that we have that new fast bridge assessment that every kiddo's taking, we thought we might kind of use that as an initial screener, like the kids that really score well on that, maybe kind of raise a flag and say, hey, maybe we should talk to their parents about putting them in the loop for, for looking at them a little more closely for hats, um, just to make sure that... I feel like we scoop up most of the kids that we should get by the time they maybe get to middle school, but it'd be nice to identify them a little bit earlier if they ought to be in hats with me. So um, that's something that we'll look forward to looking at a little bit closer next year. Do any of you have any questions for me? Yes, I yes. was wondering why the percentage is so low of the qualifiers mm -hmm. compared to how many you test. That's a good question. Um, if you think about, uh, we, we've tested a lot in the last couple of years. I think there's been a little bit of a push. I went and spoke at HES last fall, kind of telling teachers what to look for, and I kind of said, if you have it all an inkling, this kiddo maybe should be looked at, let's go ahead and put them in the, in the loop. And that SAGES test is really difficult for those younger kiddos, and they have to score the 90th percentile on one of the subtests of that to go on to the IQ test. Right. And so we were, the way we were assessing before, we used um, the PIAT, and when, when they were old enough, we had some MAP referrals, um, and we weren't getting as many that went on that, that we grabbed that way. So I feel like we're scooping more up to look at, but that SAGES test is difficult. So that's maybe one reason why the fast bridge might be another way to further narrow it down. I think we're testing a lot of kids that obviously are good at school and have some great talent and great skill, um, but the the criteria for HATS is scoring in the 95th percentile on that IQ piece, so technically you should have about 5% of a class if they're scoring a higher than 95% of all the kids who take that, and so... Um, that would you know, be a lot of kids in a class of, say, close to 200. Right. If there's a class of 200, then that would be... 10. That'd be 10 would be hats kiddos. And so I have, by the time they get to middle school, that's running about where I am. 
I have nine sixth graders, I have 20 seventh graders, I have 11 eighth graders. And so the percentages work out to be pretty close to what they ought to be. But I think down here at the lower grades, we are testing a lot of kids, mm -hmm. which is fine. We want to cast a wide net, you know, catch the, all that we can. But there's only going to be that roughly 5% of a whole class that's going to qualify. And we had a lot of kiddos. We have you know, 86 referrals. But 9% does seem kind of low to me, too. And that's where we want to look at that SAGES test and see if that's a little too restrictive. Is that 90% for, you know, second, third grade? is a little bit too hard um, and then if they right. were more of them went on to take the IQ test maybe we would get a few more of them in hats that ought to be in there but the IQ test is is more expensive to administer and it takes the time because it's the one-on-one -on -one test with the counselor and so you don't want to administer that to 89 kids no. and then have only nine percent of them qualify the sages is a group test that's just paper pencil and they get like 20 kids at a time can take that so that's it's pretty uh, low stakes to take to try that and, and take it so yeah. I noticed somewhere in your report it said something about DESI has a number that you have to not go over. Did I understand that right? Number of students that could be in the I don't think there's program? a I don't think there's a max as oh, long as they're okay. meeting the I I criteria. It. No, but that five percent is pretty much what if you go over that five percent. It used to be when it was a when it was a categorical reimbursement that uh -huh. you would get dinged on if, if you, you had were, too if many you were over identifying students. Really, there's you have Denise to give so much. It's teaching. ninety. It says ninety students per desi is her case okay. load. Oh, ninety. Is oh, for I think that's for like one teacher to handle is as a case load. Yeah, is that? Yeah, I thought it was saying? eighty-six, but maybe I got that. Okay. I don't know. I can't find it. I think that's kind of an acceptable like caseload for a gifted facilitator to have you no know, more kiddos than that. Obviously, in a bigger district, you'd have. More I was kids also than wondering that. if you do any sort of um, follow up with the high school students. At all, because I've noticed when I participate in Scholar Bowl that there aren't very many students who do that. And I know there were a lot more in hats that could be participating. Could be, yeah. And anybody can participate in it. Um, I don't really do a lot of follow up. I, uh, when I took over the position, I. Um, Donna Fouch, who did it before me, she used to go and have lunch at the high school like once a week, and kids could hang out with her if they wanted to. And I was told that that probably wasn't a that's something I should do anymore. Um, so no, I don't. I mean, I always tell my kiddos, I'm here if you need a letter of recommendation, if you need advice, if you, you know, need course advice, but um, there's nothing formal that I so do. So they just get school. the AP courses in high right. school and that's right. pretty much the end Yes, of we hope that they meet their intellectual needs by mm -hmm. being able to take honors and AP and college level courses and all the extracurricular things that are available to them. But okay. yeah, nothing in my formal schedule. And the solar thing, it t it tell me what that is. I don't really know what It's that a portable is. solar charger that we purchased from a company, and so it's got a solar panel. It's on the south side of those bleachers at the stadium, mm -hmm. so um, you can't really see it until you kind of go around to that end. And so, and it has USB ports all around it, so if you need to charge up a phone or a oh, tablet that, and you have a okay. USB port, it's free solar-powered electricity to do that with. So if somebody's there and they want to film their their child at a track meet and their phone is that's dead, they can cool. charge it up there at the end of the thing. Yeah, and that's available to anybody that, that uses the stadium. Wonderful. Yeah, Ooh, so that was kind thank of Thank you. You're welcome. So one question and a follow-up on that about not going and having contact at the high school. Mm -hmm. Was that because it wasn't worth the time? Or was it because sure. somebody else doesn't foresee it as value? I'm not sure if the teachers didn't want kiddos pulled. I don't know that they were pulled out of class. I don't really know. That was a few administrators ago. Time. And I teach, her schedule was a little different. I teach all day um, middle school kids. I have four to five hours of middle school kids a day, so I'm not, you know, just available to run over to the high school. But um, it certainly, you know, I'm not closed off to the idea, but there are a lot of districts at which the gifted services end at the end of eighth grade, and that's just what they what they pay me to do. Just as a parent of two, mm -hmm. they enjoyed some of that time and that contact at the high school. Sure. And even yeah. still talk about it a little bit. Yeah. And so I'm just, just because you're in high school, but I just food for thought. Yeah. Just yeah. curious. Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned Donna mm -hmm. as a previous a HATS instructor. Uh, last year she had introduced a law regarding the HATS program and the students and the ability for, uh, I guess, family members to appeal a mm -hmm. decision of the school. Mm -hmm. Have we had that used? Or last time I saw, I think that was a statewide bill and it hadn't been in debate or passed or anything like that in committee. Kind of, yeah, it didn't. Yeah. Okay. 
Do we have any other questions? Thank you very much, Mrs. Thank you. All right. Chris, I believe you are up for the partner organization. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm Chris Maxwell. I've been the president of the Drama Boosters Club for the last four years. Uh, and this is, uh, I'm the, uh, what is it, the lame duck president? Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, this is my last official business. Um, just, I guess, l let you kind of know what the drama club's been up to and the school's been up to and how we've been trying to help them as uh, parents. And um, we kind of go between the four of us who are in uh, leadership. There have been about maybe four other parents that have been really involved. And every once in a while, if it's something fun, we'll get the, a few other parents <laughs> with us. Um, you know, delivering food's not necessarily fun. Uh, uh, actually, Mrs. Keith has been much more organized the last couple of years than I've been used to, and so all of the days of set building and sewing and, uh, well, not sewing personally, but uh, <laughs> other parents uh, uh, have been uh, definitely not as needed. Uh, so I've basically just, um, you know, taken tickets and we've uh, run the concession stands at the, all the shows and everything. And uh, I guess one thing that we have been uh, in charge of has been working at Starlight uh, in the summers. Uh, we uh, work the gates and scan tickets and greet people and that kind of thing. So uh, everyone kind of takes a hand in that. Actually, anyone can do it. They don't have to be involved in the uh, theater program at school. Um, it's going to be a little bit different this year. In the past, we've gone in, we've gotten our, you know, we've had to wear khaki pants and white shirts and then these really awesome green uh, jackets, vests, um, and then we've taken tickets and kind of done everything from programs to tickets, but this year they're kind of separating those out, so we're just going to be handing out programs and uh, greeting people, which is still nice. We won't get quite as much reimbursement for that, and we don't get to operate the scanners, which the kids enjoy doing, <laughs> but uh, I think we'll probably you know be able to drag them there. Um, so we're still uh, staying involved in that, and that's really our primary fundraiser that we do is working there in the summer. We, we did some of the uh, working uh, at um, like Kemper Arena, or um, I can't remember what the other, what was another place we worked at this year. That I obviously wasn't personally involved in it because I can't remember where it was. Uh, so we had several uh, plays, musicals this year that uh, we helped out with. We had the Pajama Game in uh, the fall, which I think was uh, pretty successful. I, I A lot of these I hadn't uh, heard of before until some of the songs start playing. You're like, oh, I guess I have heard that one before. And, um, uh, and then we had uh, the One Act uh, competition and Reader's Theater. We did uh, three... Uh, different plays there. Uh, one was The Servant of Two Masters, one was Moral Compass, and the other one was A Rose for Emily. Uh, and actually at, uh, at one of those, one of our uh, students, uh, Hallie Keeney, uh, won uh, Best Actress at the League Championship. So, um, And I believe she kind of came out of nowhere. Nobody realized that she could act or had, you know, we kind of get students in every year who kind of surprise us once they get on stage and kind of flourish. And it's always nice to see people or kids coming into things that they're passionate about. Um, we did uh, send several students and uh, Mrs. Keith and her husband to the Missouri Thespian Conference. In years past, it's been, uh, they kind of go back and forth between St. Louis and Kansas City, and this was one of the years it was in Kansas City, so uh, it wasn't quite as exciting driving up the 45 minutes to the Marriott <laughs> as it is going to St. Louis, but it was still still fun. Um, and then our uh, spring play was uh, Rashomon, uh, which uh, was uh, fairly successful. The kids enjoyed it. There was lots of uh, pretend fighting going on in that uh, play. And, of course, you know, high school kids like to wield weapons, and so that was, <laughs> that was uh, very nice. Um, we, then we also had a, uh, an on-stage dinner theater uh, called the No Exit Dinner Theater, and that was here just recently. And I hear that was, uh, you know, it was successful. It was our first time doing that, uh, but it was kind of good, good to get that first one out of the way and figure out uh, different ways that we would like to, to do it uh, in uh, years coming up. Uh, we also did a children's show uh, for uh, some of the elementary schools uh, in town called Step on a Crack, uh, which they always enjoy watching the, the older kids uh, act and stuff. Um, 
we did do uh, did have uh, scholarships available. That's uh, one of the big things that we spend our money on every year, um, and kind of depends on the, the students' involvement uh, and whether they want to go through the effort of uh, getting the application and the essay and stuff together. We had a lot of seniors this year, but only had two apply for scholarships, so it was not a very long meeting to determine who got what. And so. And my daughter was one who did not apply for a scholarship, so <laughs> evidently she's not worried about paying for college. <laughs> 18 now. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, <laughs> so uh, that was, that's kind of the majority of what uh, the Drama Boosters is, has been doing this year, and I'm sure it'll be more of the same next year. We have some new leadership. Um, a couple of us had to step down this year because our kids were graduating, so... Uh, but it's been fun. I had a good time. I spent a, a lot of a lot of time on that stage, and uh, I have several other kids that will be coming through school, so uh, I won't be a stranger for sure. Very good. Thank you very Thank much. You. Yeah. Thank you. You're you're welcome to go unless you want to stay and hang out. I was just pretending like I was going. <laughs> 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 good actress. <laughs> okay. We'll hit the C sip now. Well, before I start with the C sip, I just I want to acknowledge Mrs. Freeze as well. I, I shared a letter with the board that uh, Mrs. Freeze was recognized for one of the contests that uh, she helped out. Her team helped out uh, another school that uh, was uh, unable to glue their stuff together. I guess so. <laughs> did you get a letter about? That? We did. We got a letter. So <laughs> I wanted to nice. wanted to recognize you for that. Thank and you. That, that, was that was a nice comment from that other school. Mm -hmm. So. Um, also, just to address the high school situation with gifted, so when you have those 90 kids, you're kind of limited on what you can do. You have to prioritize that. So at high school, we're able to differentiate the instruction a lot more because we can customize the education. We have AP classes. We have uh, uh, dual credit classes. We have just a, a variety of things that we can offer kids that we can't really do at the lower level. So when we prioritize with one staff member, it kind of really needs to be th that identified area. So that's really something that's very common with, with school districts. So don't think that that's not, I know she feels like she could, well, she wishes she could teach all of them, I'm sure, but that's, uh, we, we do appreciate what you do. So. Um, on the CSIP, just to talk about a few of the things that we've addressed uh, this uh, this month in particular. So in, uh, with goal number one, with the viable curriculum, uh, we've uh, established reading and writing teams. A writing team has met frequently. Uh, they have implemented the, uh, the new Lucy Calkins uh, writing uh, with, that will be with all of those uh, writing teachers K through 5 next year. Um, and then uh, the reading team has met. They've selected their uh, resource. Uh, so there will be a pilot of two teachers per grade level K through 5 that will use the, the new resource, and, and they're excited about it. They're particular, particularly excited by the support that we're going to have from the publisher. Uh, they'll have PD where they come in and, and meet with the staff. Uh, and then, of course, with the, with the time frame that we've put in place in two years, all the entire grade level will be <coughs> immersed in that reading curriculum. And what grade level was that? It'll be K through five. K through five. Right. Okay. Uh, with particular emphasis really on, on three, four, and five, we, we, we have the, f the early literacy, the phonics program in place already. So uh, it's just a... a a way to, to bridge that gap, really, and, but uh, but we still are providing additional resources uh, all the way down through kindergarten too. Um, but really, the idea is that we'll have two two staff members at each of those uh, grade levels, who will then be the in-house experts, so that in the second year, when we implement the full uh, phase in, that, that when there's questions, that they can go back to those the the uh, in-grade level experts. So uh, that's part of that process on that curriculum adoption. That is something that. Um, the resource adoption that we really looked at with uh, that came about is we listened uh, through the listening post process and, and just uh, and not only our data from our students but also hearing the teachers and that's that's really what the, what a lot of our emphasis was on um, professional de development again that's that's on goal number three we're related to the CSIP and that that uh, is will be associated with the the reading and writing teams as well so um, the community, com community partnerships, uh, goal number four, 
Uh, so we had the, the giving growth. I think you're all aware of that presentation that was uh, started with um, with H at, at HES with Dr. Falke, I believe was actually who, who wrote the grant. And so we had uh, representatives from the Giving Grove in Kansas City came down and talked about where's the ideal place to put the orchard at HES. And, uh, and so there's two locations that we're looking at. One is uh, right uh, in the front of where the first grade hallway is, there's a strip of grass right there, and we'll have to. There's a couple trees that are existing that will come out, and then we'd fill it with like up to 20 trees, I think is what it is, or 12, 20, something like that. Yeah, something great. A lot of trees. Um, two in there. Yeah, there's a two in there somewhere. Yeah. More than two. More than two, less than 20. I don't know. Uh, then uh, the the other alternative uh, option is is back behind by the outdoor classroom. There's a strip between the the chain link fence and then the uh, outdoor classroom there's a there's an area there too so those are kind of two areas and we met and talked with with them and learned a lot of things different types of trees that are options uh juju fruit i think is that it jill i can't <laughs> juju. juju b yes i've never even heard of some some it's, uh, like a dry dry date kind of a fruit so that was one of the things that's pest resistant and that was one of the options apples and pears and all kinds of stuff so anyways that goes along with that community partnership and, and did they say how large these trees will be when we plant them uh they said they would allow uh 15 feet off center is that what they said jason yeah, I think? they're seven to eight feet tall i but believe and like three this. quarters to oh, one when they, inch yeah when we plant them they're yeah they're seven three quarters like to four one to, inch four okay. to seven i think four, four to seven, seven feet and, seven. and three quarters to one inch yeah, diameter that's right. good. but and they guarantee them so if they you know typical orchard tr type tree if they if it fails to grow or dies and they'll replace it so as long as we don't kill it that's you know yeah. so will it get fruit like the next year no or? so they um they want they try to they try to develop fruit within the first uh three years but they they recommend picking the the blooms and the fruit off of them that are the first two years and then the third year you'll get a small uh, yield, but the fourth year, then they start really picking up, and then ultimately, I think year six is kind of where it starts full on. It takes a while. <coughs> it's a good idea. It's a good. good yeah, it's, it was really neat opportunity. The kids will love it. So mm -hmm. it's a that's a neat thing. So I can't keep the plants alive in my house. So if I'd have had an opportunity like that, I might. You might have learned. Right? I might have. <laughs> Probably. Me too. Yeah. They're they're going to be secure in the sense that public cannot come and pick the fruit away from them well <laughs> I, you know if it's out in the front there's i mean we'll have camera we have camera systems and things like that but i mean the deer might eat it too well and that is something they asked about too and in the back i know there's some high fencing there that would prohibit the deer from coming in but uh, i don't think anything's foolproof when it comes to deer so <laughs> that is something they asked they asked about too so um there's usually enough for everybody. Yeah, that's you know, you just true. have to share. Just have to share. <laughs> you hope they get a little bigger before the deer start to eat the trees. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, and then goal number five, uh, multi-tiered system of support. Uh, Laura talked about the fast bridge system that uh, that we've used to to help us uh, identify, you know, a variety of, of concerns or successes with students and and how we can best meet their needs. So we're excited about that too. So. That is uh, our CSIP update and the goals we've been working on. So the, the piloting, where there's, there's two Pilot. pilots mm -hmm. per grade, is that so it, you'll have the, the two experts in the grade right. and then the, the goal is obvious, obviously they'll be able to train and help the other teachers in the subsequent years right. as opposed to ripping the band-aid off and saying here you're doing it all right. at once right otherwise and that's the model that we used with the writing team that was in place this year um we had two from each grade level and they went to the training with lucy calkins and then they they come back and the next year it's fully integrated and really that is because um it, it helps us with that professional development model so that we're not just throwing it all at them at once and so they have a little in-house expertise, so if they struggle, they can go right there and they have somebody who's experienced and gone through those things, too. So it's okay. a train-the-trainer model is really what we look at. So, okay. Are we going to create a new CSIP at some point? Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. So um, the first uh, thing that we're looking at doing is uh, 
uh, purchasing some analytic software which will help us in that process so when we go open ask those open-ended questions from the community we get that open-ended response and we can uh, analyze those uh, those thoughts uh, but that's uh, coming in the near future so all right any other questions or comments we will move on to personnel the 2019-20 certified salary schedule. We need a motion. I move to approve the addition of $600 to the base, a vertical step increase, and an additional step be placed, I can't read off my page, to the master's columns on the 1920 certified salary schedule as presented. Second. Can we talk about it a little bit? Yes, please. Okay. <coughs> so what what we've done is we've added $600 to the base, uh, but we had to fix some of the cells because um, I'll give you an, just an example. So at BS Step 5, the column went down 500, 500, then it jumped to 600, then went back to 500. Well, I don't know if it was a clerical error. I'm not sure how that came into existence, or but we had to fix that in that process. So when we say we're adding $600 to the base, um, so between the, the base addition and the vertical step, um, there'll be some difference, differences between where a person is. So that is one thing. Um, we are asking for a vertical step for all of the, of the people on the certified salary schedule. Um, the other thing is that, so that's when you add the $600 to the, to the base, that helps that beginning or, or attracting new, new employees. Well, the other thing I wanted to do was make sure that we addressed on the master scale and over. So we had some people that were frozen at uh, step 26. Um, so personally, I think that if you have a teacher who has a master's degree, um, I think we should try to get them to step 30 because that's really the retirement age uh, in the state of Missouri. So my goal is to get to step 30 in that column and over. It's it's like it it continues to drop down, uh, but I I personally feel like once they have their master's degree, if they want to stay and be a, a master teacher, um, the, the schedule doesn't really need to encourage them to go beyond a master's degree because typically if they're going to go beyond a master's degree, it's, it's an administration. So um, anyway, so I, I feel like we had some that were locked in that cell and I want to continue that down to get to 30 so that's my goal on that piece of it. Um, it does represent so what we with the with the staff reduction uh, for next year um, there's there's basically two ways that you look at the percentage increase one is you can take the total price of the package from the certified salary last year and compare it to the schedule this year well the problem is with our the number of reductions and placements that we've had, you can't do that because it'll look like um, it look it'll look like you've lost money in the schedule, which we have instead of gaining. So what what I've done then is I've taken the average of the schedule. So you just take the total divided by the number of staff members in the schedule, and it gives you the average teacher salary. Um, so figuring the average teacher salary last year to the average teacher salary this year on the proposal it's a 3.344 percent increase in the average teacher salary again not everybody's going to get a 3.344 percent increase it, it depends on where you fall where your cell is and and we again tried to straighten that out for consistency but uh, that's the recommendation uh, just to give you a comparison of increases um, so the, the Greater Kansas City uh, Superintendent's Organization sends out a survey, um, and, and it can change. This is Nobody's held to this, but uh, at the time I checked uh, today, uh, the average increase in that GKC group uh, was a 2.8% increase for, for teachers. So we're asking mm -hmm. for 3.34% on the median salary increase. So, or, mm -hmm. so. What does that equate to in a dollar amount? Maybe I will. He's got it. Oh, he's got it. Okay. Yep, I've got it on here if I can find it. Man, need better glasses. <laughs> Come on. Pretty impressive. 
impressive. What's the dollar that you want? You want the average salary? You want the the total increase? Yeah. What's the increase? Um, the so the the resignations and the attrition is saved us enough to basically compensate. Is We're going to see an increase to the salary schedule. So the increase with uh, with benefits. <laughs> Uh, of course, we had a we're having the health care increase three percent. So with that, um, it's it represents an uh, eighty three thousand nine hundred nine dollar increase uh, to the budget, which we believe will be offset by the um, assessed valuation. Assess, assess valuation. That's with attrition, but that's uh, with assessed valuation increase that we're expected to see in our conversations with the county. Then that should uh, that will take care of that. So. And then that's just not this not just this schedule, but the other schedules too. So you said eighty three. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's about what my assessed property value increase <laughs> was for the <laughs> or, or tax. <laughs> You're going to pay eighty four thousand dollars in taxes, Chris. I, I know it was big. That's <laughs> impressive. <laughs> I didn't even know <laughs> Let me personally Maybe thank just you. Felt like that. <laughs> Let me personally thank you. <laughs> I'd like to say that this is. This is a great workup that you guys have put together because our neighbors to the north just increased their taxes and then raised it by 1500 to their base for their teachers. So for us to be able to do this, raise it 600 and not miss, mess with anything, I think is a good step in the right direction. Well, and uh, I mean, just to offset, I, I, well, I turned on the news yesterday and yesterday morning and, and heard the uh, concerns about uh, teacher salaries in Missouri which you'll you're gonna hear a lot because they're trying to address the um, the attrition of teachers and in, in Missouri and, and and I'll say we've got a lot it's it's we've got a lot of work to do it's it's a marathon it's not a sprint but uh, um, our teachers deserve it I think so absolutely all right any other questions or comments we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. District LPN nurse salary schedule. So <clears throat> this schedule is a new schedule that, that uh, we are proposing. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I started talking. No, you're anybody. fine. Uh, motion. We do. Oh, we need a motion and then a second. Yeah, you're I'll right. move to approve the 2019-20 district LPN nurse salary schedule as presented. Second. Okay, sorry, jumped again. Um, so this is actually a proposal, and uh, I'm going to commend Jason on this. He's been working very hard uh, over the last year to try to, to balance this out. So the Fair Labor Standard Act um, currently says that if you are an LPN, you're supposed to be a non-exempt employee, which means you have to fill out a timesheet. Um, it says that RNs may be uh, an exempt a non-exempt employee. Well, uh, for for the issue of fairness, we wanted to make sure our employees basically should all be classified as non-exempt, um, which means they need to be paid hourly. We need to make sure we reimburse them when they work over, as sometimes they do. Um, and um, we need to make sure that things were consistent in terms of hours. And so, like building the building, it would be this building would be 177 days this building would be 183 days so we wanted to make it consistent and make sure everybody was here 177 so it's even across the board uh, we wanted to make sure the hours were consistent because the employees that were working 177 days were only working uh, seven hours whereas the ones were working 183 right 183 184 were working eight so we wanted to come to a consensus where everybody was seven and a half for 177 days uh, put them on the salary schedule based on an hourly rate, um, which would be a, uh, annualized. That's a whole another mess with education. But um, anyways, this is this is our proposal. Um, it would represent either a, a, a considerable increase in in money. Uh, some of them will see uh, about a seven percent increase in money, but it's. Related to that increase in money is their time. They're going to put in more time to get that more money. And then some of them will see a decrease in time and get paid the same. So it's an hourly increase. So um, 
that's how that schedule worked out. Did I explain that well enough, Jason? Hopefully so. Uh, that is our proposal. We talked to the nurses and explained to them that rationale, and that's our proposal. How was that received when you spoke to them about that? I think they they took it well. They understood. I mean, it took us a couple times of having those conversations. So we started conversations early and got information from them of how things were working currently. Um, looking at concerns that we had throughout the year when we've had subs in and just different people working buildings and not knowing them. Okay, am I working a seven-hour building or an eight-hour building? Um, comparing how all the buildings are slightly different um, in size, the duties of the nurse, and all that kind of stuff. So, listen to all those things, trying to come up with an average that one doesn't financially cost us a lot of money because we're not in a place to make a huge change there, but also one that compensates them for their extra time or provides them extra time. So um, truly wanted to be fair to them and and to the district in trying to make this happen. So um, this was about the best, most consistent way of dealing with that. And a big part of that that came out is that non-exempt part. Um, which is uh, that's probably what they're going to be most frustrated with is they're going to need to go to filling out timesheets and <laughs> and um, there's a lot of times where they're wor they're working more than they should per se like a lot of people do in education um, but we need to follow the laws and that, that'll be that correctly right so. that'll be a concern for us as we move forward we'll have to really uh, help them to figure out where we can assign duties that they're doing to other people possibly or see what we can do because it is a concern you're going to hourly now that that means overtime or and, comp time, and, so. and they work together they share some of those duties too i mean i'll just use an example there's one nurse in every building well there's many more kids at the high school and the elementary school than there are like McEwen and ecc so they share some of those duties also and so they're willing to do that they work together well as a team so you would mentioned overtime. I was getting ready to ask about that. So if they're if they're hourly, then they have the opportunity to get overtime. How is that monitored? Is would that be the, the principal's responsibility? Yes. And that, but it. I mean, obviously there are things that go on that sometimes they may not have overtime. Administrator and district nurse will be overseeing those duties. Right. Okay. Does this affect any one at the CCC that may have this LPN or RN license? As a teacher or anything, there's no crossover there. Okay. How many RNs are there? One. Well, the, the district nurse, but she's she's an exempt. <coughs> she's exempt. She's in a supervisory role. The way the Fair La Labor Standards Act reads, if you supervise two or more employees, then you're then you're exempt status. So. Okay, but she's the only RN. No, we do have another one at the high school. But she is not exempt because she doesn't supervise two or more. Right. Gotcha. That's it. Says May. The way that the FLSA says it says May. So we figured in the in consistency for consistency purposes, right. we should have them all treated the same yeah. if they're a building nurse. Yeah. So, and we have some that have earned a degree uh -huh. because on the salary schedule right. before they could earn that degree. So it worked better just to separate, have a nurse's salary schedule uh -huh. and that degree non-teaching salary schedule. I mean, it's the same, but it's two different mm -hmm. schedules. Thank you for all your hard work. Mm -hmm. all right, any other questions or comments? We have a motion in the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. The 2019-20 degreed non-teaching salary schedule, we need a motion. Make a motion to approve. I have to look that over. To approve a vertical step increase on the 2019-2020 degreed non-teaching salary schedule as presented. Second. Mm -hmm. This is another one of those situations where our goal is to get to 30. For some reason, I don't know why this in our nurse schedule, we wanted to get to 30. It was stopped at 16 or 17. and 15, two years. Right, so I we're mean, trying to, the goal is to get, again, to get to 30, the age of retirement on those schedules. So we, we asked for uh, an added uh, step on that scale, too. So. Can you give an example of what position this would be? A degreed non-teaching position? School social right worker. Now it's a social worker. Social worker. And that's pretty much um, it. Yeah, you could. We potentially could have probably occupational therapy or physical therapy in the future. I mean, we right, contract yeah. some of those things. So, but we always look to not contract them right. too. We always look for options there too. So, there's potential for others. But. Okay, just curious. 
Okay. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The 2019 substitute teacher pay schedule. We need a motion. Move to approve the 2019 20 substitute pay schedule as presented. Second. Uh, this is something that needs some work in the future, um, but honestly, the budget and where we're at right now, um, we didn't feel like we could add to it at this time. So. Is it this? Is it different from last year? Okay. okay. Any other discussion? Okay. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 2019 other hourly pay schedule. We need a motion. Make a motion to approve the 2019-2020 other hourly pay schedule as presented. Second. The only change that I remember paying to make it on this was the substitute for district nurse, right? We, ex we substitute. Yeah, this is substitute for all nurses. Yeah. We used to separate that out, but you know, when you when somebody comes to substitute for the district nurse, they're subbing as a nurse, not subbing as the district leader in that position. So uh, we felt like that needed to be consistent as well. So, so you're saying that's the only one that was changed? Is that what you just said? No. And that doesn't correspond to those substitute teachers? No. Okay. Well, kind of, but <laughs> it's a, that's a debate we've gone back and forth over. So <laughs> it's just difficult. I mean, <clears throat> it's difficult. It's difficult to find subs right now. The, the um, unemployment rate or the, yeah, the, the employment rate being what it is, when you have low unemployment, it's difficult to find part-time <laughs> workers, really. And so... Um, I think where I was wanting to go with that was if they're a nurse, so they're, they're degreed, they're more experienced than a regular substitute. So to make sure that that's more Yeah, but a substitute them. teacher can be a, is a certified person too. So you have to have a certificate you have to, have sub -certificate to yeah. be 60 hours. 60 hours and okay. yeah. Could you give an example of a high school student worker, $9 an hour, what they would do for that? Paint crew. Yeah, but well, that's basically what it is. Well, they can't. There's other things. All too. of our student workers. We have many student workers throughout the school year. Mm -hmm. We use them to work the the book and the clock for uh, sub varsity ball games. So they all receive nine dollars. They're also we work them in the PAC um, every concert they go to, and right. they recognize the light crew and all those that they're working. Um, when we put in the video board and all that kind of stuff for every one of those games where we have a cameraman, um, there's like six workers to, to make that happen. So those are all student workers. Okay. They all apply for those jobs online through our talent ed, mm -hmm. um, and the activities office takes care of that. Mm -hmm. On the maintenance side, um, I have it open right now for student workers for the yeah, summer. I saw that. Um, and so they apply online, and I work through that. So I'll do a brief interview with them. Um, that was added last year where they, we made them do that application just right. as a life lesson. Yeah, that. that's good. So. Thank you. And then there's a line there, certified staff part-time for custodial maintenance in the summer. I thought we just went to So one company. of our teachers that uh, works with the paint crew, and that's the yeah. only one I can that, that will That will change in the future, right. and we probably won't have that, and that company will take care of that. Um, however, if that company takes care of that, that will be probably um, in addition to normal. It's kind of the regular, what is that? we'll have to work through that, of how much of the painting and those kind of projects they will take on with their, um, with their people or our people that are working for them. Um, currently this year we have, uh, we're going to have this year a paint crew of four, uh, two adults, two teachers, and two kids. Um, and we go through and um, put some financial money to that. By using those four, we're able to get more accomplished than some of our contracting. And we have two student laborers and two oversight with one foreman, actually. And um, he takes care of organizing, um, ordering the paint, getting the paint, and maintenance. And myself are kind of out of it, and we can do some other stuff, and he can just paint and get projects done as until we run out of money we do that based off of money i work with kathy like how much is left throughout the summer here's our list of projects so uh, it's not guaranteed that we're going to be working all summer long if they put a lot of hours in right at the beginning and we're out of money we're out of money so 
No, but I love that with two kids and two teachers, you can get more done than you can if you contract it. That, mm -hmm. that it shows that you're picking kids that can that have a yeah, work ethic. And we'll have and two returning paint crew members this year, so it should be even faster and better because they it took it took some time last year for them to train and kind of. I remember the first week they went back and they were painting in the CCC and the, the foreman went back and was like, I'm not happy. And he goes, we're, we're changing how we're doing this. Go back. They're stopping 30 minutes early, going back, assessing their work, making sure it's getting the quality that it needs to get. So, right. okay. Any other conversation? We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Coaching The 2019-20 coaching salary schedule. We need a motion. I move to approve the 2019-20 coaching salary schedule as presented. Second. So if you look on I, I believe you can see the changes that we made to uh, that particular schedule in terms of uh, removal of uh, some of those things. I'm trying to think if it's got, yeah, it's got all the, I explains all that. So. Uh, Mr. Maxwell did a great job in working with with Mr. Eggers. I believe probably started last year on this process and uh, trying to again make things consistent, make things so that it balances out. But you've got a lot of positions that are it reduces steps in essence and makes an assistant an assistant. Not this is a JVC team assistant or whatever. We had so. issues specifically. I mean, the ones the easiest to cite is at the middle school. You had a seventh grade coach and an eighth grade coach teaching, coaching the same sport, same length of season, everything. But one was paid more because it was eighth grade versus seventh grade. Um, you had assistant coaches at the high school that might have coached the C team, but they're also helping with the JV and they're also helping with varsity. But because they're the C team coach, they're paid less than the JV, who's helping with the freshmen and helping with that. So it's trying to, again, become consistent, equalize this. He did some studies on how long a season, how many hours, how much time to try to make it fair that if the varsity coach is paid this percentage, all the assistants are paid this percentage, um, and those should be the same. So before varsity coach might be two varsity coaches might be paid the same and then the assistants were different within I, there was there's all kinds of different things that are just cleaned up and more consistent so i is actually the extra duty so i apologize i was looking at that wrong so i is the extra duty um mr eggers explained the coaching salary changes that that uh, go along with that so Okay. Any other discussion? I feel yeah. better. I was looking for. I can't I, read. I didn't want to show my. Ignorance. I can't read. Apparently. <laughs> and that, that six hundred dollar base increase was the one that we just approved. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's already worked into these figures. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Two thousand nineteen twenty clerical technology technology business office salary schedule. We need a motion. Move to approve a vertical step increase on the 2019-20 Clerical Technology Business Office Salary Schedule. Second. So um, I'm going to reiterate what Marcy was talking a little bit about the the her proposal. is It's a good proposal. Um, I just think where, where we're at with the budget, we have to get to a point. Again, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. So I, I think she has a good plan that we, we need to address. Uh, at some point. However, I, w I do want to emphasize that this does represent a 3% increase. Each of those steps is a 3% increase and there there have been years where where people have not received a 3% increase but the people on these schedules did receive a 3% increase because they were on this schedule. So, um, so that's, I mean the proposal right now is to leave it where it's at. They will get their 3% <coughs> increase by taking the step down on the on the schedule. I, I just am concerned that we have maybe neglected raising their salaries for as many years as it's been. Well, again, you're talking about the starting salary because they're right. still getting a 3% increase, which is the same proposal we're proposing for our teachers and, and for other people. So so. We just give 600 to raise the base on everybody else to raising salary. So raising their salary should go right along with it instead of keeping it the same. 
we just voted to increase everybody's base. But with that base increase, if I if we just gave six hundred dollars and nothing else, that would be far less than three percent. So it's the step plus the six hundred dollars, and it, and that doesn't even represent three percent to everybody. It's the schedule as a whole. So if I give a master teacher who's on step twenty seven six hundred dollars plus a step of five hundred dollars. $1,100 is not going to be a 3% increase for I'm that employee. Very happy. On all the support staff schedule, no, I'll say all, but on this one, let's speak specifically, each step is equal to 3%. On a teacher salary schedule, each step is not equal to 3%. There are some are like 1%, less than 1%, some are 1.7%. Mm -hmm. So if you don't add anything to the base on the teacher salary schedule and just give steps, they're only getting a 1.5% raise. If you give steps to support staff, they're automatically getting a 3% raise. Right. Um, however, again, and your proposal is something that we've looked at, is how to get that beginning salary up, because that's the one that needs to be competitive as we continue to work through this. But in essence of what the raise is every year, it's very, very equal. I mean, it's about as equal as you can get, approximately 3% by just giving that step. When this was built, it was built in with that so that you didn't have to go back to that beginning and carry everything through all the time. So, And next year there's a potential, I mean, like you said, it's a sprint, not a marathon, so next year there's a, pot a potential with attrition and things of that nature that we could potentially give them more, but we have to look and see. Because anything we do this year, we're, we have to continue to do. I mean, right. We can't give a raise right. and then take it away, so we have to kind of map that out very carefully. Well, I think the problem, too, is that we can keep saying, yeah, next year we'll look at it, and then like last year, it didn't change. The year before that, it didn't change. So we're not making any forward but it, progress. But it is changing. It's ch it increases three percent for them every year. If you increase, if you did this, you would give them a nine percent increase. And then you're telling your teachers you're, you're getting a three point two percent increase, and you're telling your 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 secretaries you're getting a nine percent increase. But they haven't had an increase for. They have. They get three percent every year. Every year. Every year they get the base hasn't increase. been bumped, but they're getting three percent. So what's our? What's? What do you think the average tenure of our non-cleric or our? What do we call it? Clerical business office. The folks are they? Depends on the position. Yeah. Um, Pretty wide I'd, variety. I'd say, yeah. for example, I'm I'm going to throw it out there. Your high school uh, attendance secretary has a high turnover rate. <laughs> Your superintendent secretary has a low turnover rate. <laughs> right. Thank goodness. We're going to keep it that way. So, um, so it just depends on the position. Yeah. Well, and to that point, if you were paying a higher starting wage and then they get the step up, they might be more apt to stay. Nobody's going to attract them away, you know, from nine twenty-five to 10 bucks an hour. That's a big difference. It doesn't seem you like know, we, we have a problem a, filling a those positions at all. We don't. Mm. Any other discussion on that? No, I just I think we need to do something for them and we need to do it this year and not keep putting the putting it off. I guess I'm confused about because 3% is a good average increase industry-wide, well, in the private sector. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm confused about what more you're wanting to see us do this year, Ben. I want to increase the base. I want to see us increase the base. We're increasing everybody's base, and this, this group of employees hasn't seen a base increase. We've increased teacher salaries 3% two years ago, 3% last year, 3.4% this year. <clears throat> There's your 9%. Let's put everybody on an even... Playing but over the same time, an employee that's been here has got that same increase. Gotten three every year. They've gotten three every year. Step every year. But they've had to stay with us. We we just said we've got a high turnover oh, yeah. rate in these positions. So they well, I mentioned really one position because that's the only one that I know of. So okay. And and to Nancy's point, I don't. And I could be wrong, but my perception is we're not having a, a huge problem filling those positions. Not like substitute teachers, certainly. Um, I think they're sought after positions. I don't believe they're. <coughs> I 
Period. End of sentence. All right. Any other discussion on that? Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Yes. Okay. The 2019-20 Focus Facilitator Paraprofessional Aid Salary Schedule. Need a motion. Move to approve a vertical step increase on the 2019-20 Focus Facilitator Paraprofessional Aid Salary Schedule. Second. Okay. Same topic. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you change the name yeah. so you can protect okay. the innocent. Reverse and replay. Okay. Any other discussion on that one? We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Yes. Susan, would you show me as abstaining on that? Yes, ma'am. Changes to the 2019-20 extra duty assignment schedule. We need a motion. Hang on just a second, Tina. Okay, sorry, I'm so sorry. No, no, that's okay. Please and thank you. Got to get those. These are real. <laughs> <Done>. <laughs> okay, did anybody make a motion on no, this? No, not yet. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, now we need a motion. I'll move to approve the changes to the extra duty assignment schedule as presented. Second. Second. Okay. Was I asleep? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely silent. So the, there's the changes to the extra duty assignment schedule that was approved last month. Those are some changes that we made. Um, I want to make particular note of the HMS play. That is uh, different of changing going to a stipend versus an hourly rate. And then it is something that we currently pay for, uh, just FYI. Uh, and then it's just a different way of paying. And then HMS Cheer. So this is one I've I've debated over, quite frankly. Um, cheer was added to determine what the interest was a couple of years ago, is my understanding. We've had volunteer people that um, provided those services for the middle school cheer that are no longer willing to volunteer, or the same, or different people, I guess. It's probably different people, I'm not sure. But um, anyway, uh, Coach Maxwell asked if we would put that on there of a, of a stipend for $1,500 for middle school chair. And I my question to him was, well, we just said no to C-team soccer, girls soccer, um, a couple months ago. I said, what's the difference? He said, well, you can get rid of, you don't have to have C-team soccer to still have high school girls soccer. If you don't pay a stipend for middle school chair, middle school cheer goes away. So the difference is what well, you can still have, provide that program uh, in one situation. In the other situation, this one, you know, we will have no program for middle school cheer if we don't have that stipend built in there. So that was uh, that was his explanation. I said, okay, I can support that. So These are different from the coaching Right. Position. Yeah, yes. This is on the extra duties. Are all the class sponsors um, stipends 1260? There aren't. I think this is the only. I think that's the only pay. The only class sponsor stipend. Yeah, and it's because we. Um, it's we removed for, for prom. It, it's pretty much the junior class is in charge of prom, so they're the only class sponsor stipend that I'm aware of. Is that right, Mr. Yes. Weaver? Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> And the, and the increase is through attrition, so we're dropping a person and paying more is what we're doing. So. Okay, so I see that. So we removed the 810 because somebody resigned. Right. But now we want to increase that to 1260. For the person who's doing the extra work, right? For the new one. Yeah. Clear as mud. What is, what is <laughs> ISC, the club that no longer exists? International Student Club. Okay. Yes, that's way. correct. We don't have any. <laughs> was that foreign exchange students? Since or I've been at high school, it hasn't been active. So what it was like before I got there, I couldn't tell you. So do we have foreign exchange students? Yes, but yes. they don't go to this. <laughs> okay. S All right. So we haven't been. We haven't had it. We haven't been paying this stipend. Mm -hmm. Right. It's just cluttering up the correct. document. Okay. Got okay. It. Okay. Any other? And the reason for the increase from the 810 to the 1260 was the extra work associated. That's, you're taking away. Uh, what do we have? Two. Yeah, paid, two. We're going two to one. Right. So we're reducing to one person, and then that person just to compensate them for the extra work load associated with that. So. Yeah, we have two. I think probably if I were to <laughs> guess, if I were, and this is a huge assumption. There were probably was originally one person that was paid to do that, and then at some it's point split. they said, uh, I need some more help. Can mm -hmm. you split the stipend? And so that's what happened. So two people split the stipend, and so it 
they probably split the eight ten. No, no they, they split, split the twelve six twelve. Which is why both of them It was got probably it. sixteen. Yeah, yeah. sixteen twenty is what it probably was at one time. Okay, so we're saving a couple hundred dollars. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. okay. great. Yeah. All right. Any other comments? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Clear. Moving on to food, the food service RFP. We need a motion. I move we enter into a contract with OPA Food Management Inc. for a five-year term or through fiscal year 2024 according to the pricing structure as presented. Second. Okay. So uh, we put together a food team. We tried out some food. And we went to different schools. That sounds uh, like a lot more fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's school food. Come on. Yeah. No, that looked pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty good. I will say that. It was pretty good. Um, so uh, the team that we put together did a, did a good job. And I really want to compliment to Sherry Richards, who's retiring. Uh, uh, was a part of the team and did a fabulous job and helped us with the with the technical aspects of it and and she was very supportive and helpful <coughs> in that process. So um, I do want to note um, that entering this contract does not mean that food prices will go up for the kids. I want that to be known because I think there is some question out there. Without oh, we're going to have a food service management company, that means food prices go up. There is a USDA requirement that we don't subsidize paid lunch with our free and reduced lunch. So there's an equity tool that's been in place for Mark. You can probably help me on that. How long? <laughs> there are 12 years. Yeah, so it's been in place for a while where we've had to recalculate, recalibrate the price of our lunches. And it's, um, it's been uh, every year or other year where we've had to jump. Last year we took a 10 cent jump, so which means we don't uh, need to. We can not take a jump next year. We'll talk about that next month. But uh, with that calculator, it kind of tells you what your jump is going to be. So that's not, our lunch prices won't increase because we're going with OPA. Um, however, um, you know, the, the, the process is very formal. It's DESE requires it. Uh, USDA requires it. So they, they make you mm -hmm. jump through all those, those Hoops and in fact, the contract has to be actually approved by DESE before it's approved by the Board of Education. So, which it will be. It's a boilerplate contract, but um, I uh, we're we're excited to uh, to enter into a partnership with OPA. They've had a great tradition of of pr providing food service uh, for for schools for a long time. And Mark, I, I'll let you introduce yourself. Mark's here from OPA. So. I'm Mark. Well, I'm a business development associate for this area. I'm a retired superintendent. Thirty-one years, and I had OPA in the school that I was in. So I've been working with OPA six years now. We we're very excited about the opportunity to partner with Harrisonville. Very good. So will there still be a web? Sorry, a web page like the district has now concerning <coughs> food, food. the menus and that. Is that yeah, the yeah. They've got a menu. Well, and they Sherry had worked really hard she on had a, the educational yeah. resources out there. Well, and I think the. Food slice or whatever that is. Nutri-slice. Nutri slice we use now, and that's what OPA uses. Okay. So a lot of that will be just... I just really liked when she gave us that presentation that time. It was amazing. The the, the Nutri-slice program has an app that, that uses... And most companies use something very, very similar, and we did it at Self-Op. But okay. um, it'll have all the menus in there. Okay. Um, parents can select on it and Great. select, hey, I have a food allergy for milk. It'll take out everything that has milk so that you know what's left for your kids to eat and it's um, and, and OPA and I mean like I said all the companies have that but OPA did a very good job presenting that showing that um, and the opportunities that our patrons and our kids will have okay thank you what other local school districts have OPA Belton uh, just switched from uh, did they have Chartwells before? To, uh, to they were Sodexo. Oh, Sodexo. Okay. Then they went to, to OPA. So Bob Poisel was there. He took us on a tour. And, and Mark was there with his group. And, and uh, so that was a good experience. And then uh, Oak uh, Grove was the other one that uh, they went to see. I didn't get to go that day, but that was the other school that they toured that had OPA. So those are the two, two that are close by. There's approximately 130 some school districts in Missouri. Yeah, Is that? I think it's 130, 136. It's 
So where where do you guys get your milk from? We don't have any options now. Prairie Farm or most of the stuff comes just blood. They may be. There was one supplier that we used in Kansas too that, that is not uh, in Prairie Farm. I can't remember what the name of that that one is. Uh, Highland. They bought a Prairie View or not Prairie View Prairie Farms. Don't we have a local? Yes. Dairy that Highland. we use. Mm -hmm. Highland. Highland. I think I'm not. I think yeah, I bought one. I'm thinking about. But so it's going to be the same. You're not going to change off from them. Okay. And that's when you put out an RFP. They're the only ones that Highland is the only one that mm -hmm. has ever come in with a bid. Oh, yeah. But you all will handle that, correct? Yes. Yeah, yes. We'll all your bidding off all your products. So theoretically, if you handle that, you could change it. You could go with a different company. Yes. But I'm not sure there's very many options. <laughs> or, or bread, to be honest with you. That That's correct. Very limited. I know I used to get one bid for both. Yes. I was mm -hmm. cool. Any other questions or comments? All right. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Booster Club contracts. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bring you. Your food Thank with you. you. So I'm yeah. kind of disappointed. <laughs> Pardon me. You didn't bring any food with you. I'm a little disappointed. But, uh, <laughs> I probably still have leftovers in the kitchen. Board, you want us to do board meetings? We can do something. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's Mark. I'll make a motion to approve the contracts as presented between the Harrisonville Booster Club Incorporated and the Harrisonville Cass R9 School District for the lease of a 1997. Prevost 56 seat bus, a 1997 Prevost 58 seat bus for the transportation of students on district sponsored extracurricular trips for the one year period ending June 30th, 2020. Second. Jeez. Good job. <laughs> Good job. Okay, discussion. It's the same as last year. Yeah, yeah. no, no changes. Booster Club didn't have a windfall of money where they could buy new buses, unfortunately. <laughs> They've ta I mean, there's issues with the buses. They've talked about it. I'm not sure where their their conclusion is. I, if they're going to consolidate to one bus again, uh, but they tabled it for the next year, and so this is what we have. So I think there's a lot of life left in those, is there? Ooh, it's a struggle. It's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any other discussion? We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And co copier contract extension. We need a motion. There's no motion. Move to approve the extension of the base copier printer lease through Sumner 1 UDP for a period of 14 months in the amount of 79,699.90. We have a second. Second. Okay. Just an extension of the current copier okay. lease. So. All right. Any discussion on that? <coughs> how, how are the copiers performing? Are they doing pretty good yes we have very little downtime okay that's why we're going to extend it another year rather than go out to bed we're burning up Kathy too so <laughs> 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 she's bit everything under the sun okay. just curiosity why 14 months as opposed to 12 that's how they write them I don't know they the last extension was 14 months as well really mm-hmm Yes, if you're in business, that's a good plan. You have two months every year. <laughs> Eventually, you get a free year. Right? All right. If there's no other discussion, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. We need to adjourn the meeting. We'll need a motion to reconvene in closed immediately following open. I move to adjourn the regular meeting and reconvene in closed session. Pursuant to RSMO 610.021, I'm not going to read all of that, with a few moments break before <laughs> re reconvening and closed. Oh, we have a motion. You got a second. All right. I'm sorry. He's Nancy seconded. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Nancy? Yes. Brittany? Yes. Chris? Yes. Tina? Yes. Doug? Yes. Doug? Yes. Bing? Yes. Thank you.